This video is sponsored by Stack Audio, manufacturers of the Orva speaker and equipment isolation feet used by a British audiophile. For more information about these and other products, please click the link in the description. It's amazing how quickly prejudices can form in this hobby. I'm talking about myself, not necessarily anybody else. Take Class D amplifiers, for example. My experiences have indicated that in the sub £1,000 category, the best Class D designs can hold their own with traditional Class AB alternatives. They may even have some technical advantages. But in the above £1,000 category, I struggle to be honest. I've reviewed examples that have excellent bass delivery and sound very clean. I've always chalked that down to Class D amps having a high damping factor and low distortion when done right. The thing is that all the ones that I've heard have sounded thin in the mid-range and artificial. I know there's some very expensive Class D designs out there that some people rave about, but I'm not entirely convinced about them either. They always seem to play electronic and rock music in demos. I have nothing against electronic and rock music. I play a fair amount of it, but I also play a fair amount of blues, jazz and acoustic music, and I wonder how those fancy Class D designs would fare with that. The amplifier that I'm looking at today is a little bit different. It has a Class D power amplifier stage, but a Class A tube preamplifier stage feeding it. A couple of my Patreons were really impressed with it and suggested that I should check it out. So, could this be the first Class D amplifier that I could live with? The Heaven 11 Billy Mark II amplifier is sold direct out of Montreal, Canada for the equivalent of £1,585 plus shipping and taxes. The folded steel chassis with numerous holes stamped into the sides for ventilation is bolstered by thick aluminium panels that form the front fascia, top and back. A silver finish is also available. The Billy amp has some nice individual touches Two ECC99 dual triode tubes stick out like turrets on top of a medieval castle. They'll power down after 30 minutes of inactivity to preserve longevity. The knobs are custom made. My sample came fitted with olive wood dials, but the optional panda marble ones were also provided. The large knob cleverly takes the unit out of standby and adjusts the volume, whilst the smaller one is for input selection. The Billy has an understated aesthetic with an IR sensor for the remote control and a 3.5mm headphone socket on the other side. Said remote is all aluminium of decent size with basic functions and the ability to switch off the light show if desired. On the business end are some heavy duty gold plated speaker binding posts and pre outs to bolt on external power amplifiers or to use with powered subwoofers. There are two analog RCA inputs. The third one is a moving magnet phono input to use with turntables. On the other side of the Bluetooth dongle are digital coaxial and optical inputs. Let me give you a quick tour of the internals of the Billy amplifier. Here on the left hand side, we have the tube preamplifier section and it's a mu follower configuration, which basically means you've got a standard cathode amplifier and a cathode follower bolted on top of it. And it's suitable for hi-fi use because it has very low distortion, low output impedance, and good power supply rejection ratio, which basically means the amplifier doesn't get badly affected from ripples on the power supply. And you may ask, well, how come you've got two amplifier bits on each side? cathode and the cathode follower but only one tube and that's because they're dual triode tubes so they're performing that dual function. There are transformers here for the left and right channels and that's a standard ICE module with its integrated power supply. Some of these Class D amplifiers come with integrated power supplies and that's what we have here. It is the 200 AS2 switching Class D amplifier with a switch mode power supply and it produces 120 watts into 4 ohms, actually 120 watts into 8 ohms, and 215 watts into 4 ohms. So it's almost doubling its power into 4 ohms, which is something that Class D amplifiers do a lot more readily than Class AB amplifiers. You need whacking power supplies to get Class AB amplifiers to do that. 
And there's some additional functionality here on the right hand side. You've got the volume control. I should imagine some of those ICs are for system control. And I think there's a headphone amplifier just behind this cable here in that section. Top bit there is the digital section. The DAC chip is here. It's an ESS9018, which is getting a little bit long in the tooth now. It's been around for over a decade, but it was very well regarded in its day. And there's the Bluetooth module. So plenty going on inside there. My working theory has been that the reason why Class D amplifiers have such great bass control is because the nature of the design requires large amounts of negative feedback and that helps to improve the damping factor and lower distortion and that's one of the reasons why Class D amplifiers can sound so clean. The problem is that large amounts of negative feedback also strip out harmonics, not just the higher order unpleasant stuff that can sound like nails across a chalkboard, but also the lower order stuff that adds richness. The Billy amplifier proves that not all Class D amplifiers need to sound like your music's being served up with surgical precision, as if Hannibal Lecter was removing part of the frontal cortex of your brain associated with pleasure. Apologies for the graphic reference, but there's nothing chilly or even cool about the presentation of this amplifier. I suspect whatever harmonic structures the ICE Class D power amplifier is stripping out are being replaced by the Class A triode pre-amplifier. Even tone junkies like me would have to admit that the Billy has a balanced sound. The mids sit nicely in balance with the rest of the frequency range. Yeah, it's balanced, but for something to sound totally natural, that's a little bit more tricky. You want those harmonic structures to be there in the right quantities. You want a fair amount of second, less of the third, a tiny amount of fourth, not much else. It's for this kind of harmonic profile that certain tube amplifier designs are prized for their sweetness of sound, in particular single-ended triode designs like the Dequer Zen. A similar case can be made for the best solid-state Class A designs. They lower nasty distortion like intermodulation and higher-order harmonics, whilst preserving lower-order harmonics. This Heaven 11 amplifier delivers some of the cleanest transients I've heard from any amplifier, and there's real body to the notes with a realistic decay. This isn't something that I've heard before from Class D amplifiers. There's no bleed through from the mid-range because the bass is delivered with authority and accuracy. And the sound stage is wide and deep with very precise imaging and excellent instrument separation. It feels a level above my reference amplifier at this price in these aspects of performance. But the Exposure 2510 has an ace up its sleeve. My shoulders relax when I listen to the exposure. I stop listening to the hi-fi and just engage with the music. It's to do with those harmonic structures that I spoke about earlier. You're not going to hear a bum note from a saxophone or a trumpet with a 2510. And even though it does really well, that isn't always the case with the Billy. But choosing between these two amplifiers isn't that simple. It isn't as straightforward as preferring the Billy with rock and electronic music and the 2510 with jazz and acoustic stuff. No. The trade-off between precision and richness shifts my allegiance between these two amplifiers track by track and even during moments within tracks. Switching to a full tube amplifier is interesting. My Wilsonton R8 now has upgraded tubes on all three stages. Tungsel 6SL7s on the pre, PS Vane T2 collection CV181s on the driving stage and KT88s from the same collection on the output stage. The R8 is a different kettle of fish. It has great scale and a bold, meaty kind of presentation. It makes it really fun to listen to. But in terms of keeping a grip on the bass and being able to extract information from recordings, it's some way behind the Billy Amp. The Musical Fidelity A1 is in a similar camp to the Wilsonton R8, giving up some of the R8 scale for better refinement. It too falls behind the Heaven 11 Billy amplifier when it comes to bass control and resolution. So let's up the game to my Hegel H190, which has had a recent revision. A Furno stage and some power supply mods have been added. I may get that in for a listen, but for now, I'm sticking with the previous incarnation. 
in terms of how wide and deep the sound stage is and the ability to locate performers within the mix, the Billy gives up very little to the Hegel H190, but the H190 has more effortlessness to its dynamic delivery, a bit more mid-range saturation and better refinement. In comparison, the Billy sounds a little bit more forced. There's a hint of lightness in the mid-range and a touch of sharpness to the treble, but for half the price, the Billy runs the H190 closer than it has any right to. A few things worth mentioning. I really enjoyed the Billy amplifier in late night listening sessions. It's a combination of its clarity, bass weight and control that keeps it very engaging at low volumes. My review unit also came with a spare set of JJ ECC 99 gold pin tubes that are offered on the Heaven 11 website for an additional £115. They provided a little bit more body and refinement to the sound. I would go for the upgraded tubes but the unit will also accept 12 AU7s and 12 BX7s, so there's plenty of tube rolling options out there that won't cost fortunes. All said and done, the standard or stock, what they called JJECC99 classic tubes, they sound just fine. The tubes are running in class A, so you don't want to touch them for more than an instance. They won't heat any room as they're too small, but kitty fingers need to be kept away. I would like to see an option of a little cage around them for peace of mind. I can't talk about the quality of the internal phono stage, I'll leave that for others to judge, but I wouldn't overlook the inbuilt DAC just because it's based upon an older ESS9018 K2M chip. That chip can sound really good if it's well implemented, and it's well implemented here. If you're looking at external DACs at around £500 or below, I wouldn't bother. I think you're going to have to double that budget to get something significantly better than what you get with this unit. As for speakers, the Billy Amp is the most agnostic amplifier I've heard below £2,000. For those watching the purse strings, the £799 Monitor Audio Silver 100s that I have in for a review would be my starting point. My Amphion Argon 1s at £1,400 also made great dance partners with the Heaven 11 Billy amplifier. The levels of clarity and dynamics were staggering for a circa £3,000 combination. My Proact Response 1 SEs have exposed so many amplifiers in this class for a lack of drive or musical insight in the mid-range. Not this time, the Billy drove them well and the Proacts didn't reveal any obvious shortcomings. For a change, I have no specific recommendations to partner with particularly warm or brighter sounding speakers. Just pick whatever speakers float your boat and I'm sure this amplifier will do its thing. The Heaven 11 Billy Mark II amplifier is a rare find. It has great driving ability, neutral tonality, and a remarkably natural presentation, all wrapped up in an immersive and precise soundstage. I've encountered a couple of amplifiers in this class that reproduce harmonics more authentically, like the Exposure 2510. You may prefer something that has a fuller, more organic sound, like you get from a Musical Fidelity A1. Something like a Wilsonton R8 with decent tubes will offer you more scale and sonic fireworks, which is why it's so engaging to listen to. But none of those amplifiers have the resolution and control of the Billy, and that's why it'd be my first choice with the widest range of speakers where amplifier synergy may be uncertain. So where does that leave me? Well, the Heaven 11 Billy Mark II amplifier joins that very select group as one of my favorites in this class, and gets an outstanding from this channel. I had an inkling that I might like this amplifier before I got it in for review. I just didn't expect to like it as much as I did. And that got me thinking about the question for today. What are the surprises you have had along your hi-fi journey? Please let me know in the comments section. All that remains for me to say is if you like what I'm doing with this channel, you want to see it grow, and assuming you haven't done so already, please like, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Check me out on Patreon. There's a couple of consultancy tiers you can access there if you think I can help you on your audiophile journey. Also check out the ABA Club on Patreon, which has some great ways to interact with me and fellow Patreons. But for today, for now, British Audiophile, signing off.